Hello YouTube viewers. This is the rear wheel and hub off of a BMW R75 slash 5. This is an early slash 5, a 1971 model and it's part of a restoration project I'm currently working on. And part of this restoration I had to replace the splines in both the final drive and this rear wheel hub. And this video will be about replacing this Rear, rear wheel spline, it's also called a driving dog. Uh, BMW machine shops charge around $300 for this service. Using the method I'll show you, it's possible to do this easily at home for about half that cost. And most of the cost will be this replacement driving dog. Okay, the first step is to remove the driving dog from the hub. This is a fairly simple process. I can't really go into detail because um, I've already done this, as you can see, but I basically followed the instructions to the letter on a gentleman's website, and I'll leave that link in the description of this video. But I'll try to summarize and maybe just give some tips on a couple things that I did that seemed to help. First thing you do, these are steel rivets and aluminum hub and you want to, you're going to be basically drilling out these rivets. So you want to drill out the rivets from the driving dock side. Mainly because if a drill slips or whatever you don't want to damage the aluminum and you're, you'll be throwing away this driving dog anyway so you can't really damage the driving dog. The first step is to use a a punch and make an indention on the top of the rivet and then use a 1 8 inch drill and you want to drill as straight down into the rivet as possible about a half inch. I recommend using a level and leveling the hub on a table before you start drilling and if you have one use a drill with a bubble level on it because you really you're going down a half inch with this drill and you want to if you go in at an angle you're going to end up doing damage going into the aluminum and it's it's just going to make things much worse for you you want a high quality drill bit i recommend using cobalt drill bits they're fairly expensive but you definitely do not want to break off one of these drill bits and one of the steel rivet. You, you'll just be making a simple job a lot harder. And this is a pilot hole, so you want it to be as straight as possible into the rivet. You're going to follow this up with a 3 16th inch drill bit, and it will basically follow the pilot hole you drill with this eighth inch. So use a high quality eighth, eighth inch drill bit, drill this straight down into that rivet a half inch as possible and do that for all I believe there are 10 holes 10 rivets in this this um, driving dog and again once you've gone down a half inch with a pilot hole you follow it up with a 3 16 inch and if your pilot hole was straight down the center of that rivet this is very easy you just go down this will drill out m most of the top of the rivet this you take it down you don't have to go the full half inch but you want to go down maybe I don't know a quarter of an inch or more you just want to get below the level of that driving dog with a 3 16th inch bit and then for the final drill bit you want to use a masonry bit masonry bits are carbide tipped it will basically drill off the entire head of the rivet very easily and you just drill off the rivet head all the way down till it hits the driving dog and then it should the rivet should be able to come out fairly easily after that um, the instructions on the website that I linked to don't mention it but I used penetrating oil once I had all the rivet heads drilled off I sprayed penetrating oil like PB blaster or coal or any any kind of um, penetrating oil you want to use but you want to spray it on there pretty good and just give it time 
whatever it takes, let that oil soak in around those rivets to make them easier to, to punch out. But that's the steps regarding take the, taking the driving dog off once you've got the rivets drilled out and punched through there. The driving dog comes right off. You can see there's a, a lip there and the lip on the driving dog that basically makes it see, makes it center perfectly on that hub. And after you got the driving dog off, you just order one, a new one for the slash five. And actually, um, the best thing to do is order a slash six or the slash seven driving dog. And I'll tell you why in a second here. Okay, the reason I recommend purchasing the Slash 6 or the Slash 7 driving dog are the size of the bolt holes. This is a Slash 5 driving dog. And when I was doing this, I was following instructions online. Again, the link is in the description. And I completely missed the part where the size of the bolt holes are different between the Slash 5 and the Slash 6 and 7. The Slash 5 uses a 5 millimeter bolt hole. Slash 6 and 7 use a 6 millimeter or quarter inch bolt hole. Um, I had already purchased the bolts, the close tolerance aircraft bolts, to bolt this on with prior to realizing the difference. And I received the bolts, and they, of course, they didn't fit. I thought that's not a problem. Um, I prefer the larger, the higher strength bolts and the larger diameter bolts, so I just drilled out these aluminum holes from 5 millimeter to quarter inch using a, my quarter inch cobalt drill bit. It's really easy to do. I recommend it. But the problem is drilling a hole in this driving dog. Uh, let me tell you, this is very high quality, very strong, hard steel. This, I'll tell you the truth, I could not drill through this with a cobalt drill bit. It's, I now have a quarter inch drill bit that's completely dull and it didn't even phase the steel here. Which is a good thing. You want the driving dog to be as hard as steel as possible. You want these splines to last as long as possible. But the only way you're going to drill through this driving dog would be using a masonry drill bit with a carbide tip. Okay, masonry drill bits have a carbide tip on them, brazed on the end, and they're very powerful and they will, they'll drill through even the hardest steel. Uh, the problem with these carbide tip masonry bits they're just not that accurate. Uh, they don't have to be. They're made for drilling holes in concrete blocks or a concrete slab. So to drill a quarter inch hole in a slash five driving dog, you have to get a quarter inch masonry bit. And I would recommend using a caliper and this isn't a quarter inch masonry bit. This is like a three eighths and measuring the end of the bit and they're not accurate usually they're slightly larger than what you want so if you use a quarter inch masonry bit it's going to drill a slightly larger than a quarter inch hole in a piece of metal so what you'll have to do is take a grinder and grind down the edge of this carbide tip slightly until you get the exact diameter you want and then it will drill an accurate hole. I recommend measuring the diameter of the bolt you're going to put through here. If you use a close tolerance quarter inch bolt it's going to be slightly wider than a standard quarter inch bolt and then you want to grind your masonry bit down as close to that diameter as you can. 
Now once you have your as close to perfect as possible quarter inch holes drilled in both your slash 5 driving dog and your slash 5 hub you're ready to bolt these you're ready to bolt the driving dog onto the aluminum hub. Now as far as I know the slash 6 and slash 7 and slash 5 final drives are interchangeable which tells me that the spline pattern is the same. It would have to be. I'm definitely no airhead expert but I think the slash 6 and slash 7 driving dog would already have the right size holes the quarter inch holes and they would match up with the bolt pattern on the slash 5 hub. I, I don't know that for sure. Uh, this is just what I did and it worked out for me. And if you want to save some money, the Slash 5 driving dog is about $113 online. The Slash 6 and Slash 7 driving dog is, I think, closer to $140. So if you want to save some money, you can go the route I did and use a masonry bit to drill the correct size holes or the quarter inch holes. Or you can just, if anybody out there knows that a Slash 6 or 7 Driving dog will fit on a slash five hub. I'd appreciate a comment. I'll I will edit this video or edit the comments to let you know for sure. This is just what I did and it, it seems to work great.